All right, and welcome to episode 14 of the Game Session Podcast. We were totally not just talking about candy dicks, like literally seconds before we started. <laughs> I'm, I'm your host, Jose my slash my Seth Rokage. At the top of the show, just want to go and remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe on all the socials. That includes over here on Twitch, where following is free. There's also YouTube, where you can find daily uploads of our podcast content, as well as full episodes, as well as my video essays and whatnot. And Twitter is the best place to keep up to date with all of us individually. Everybody's ads are on screen. How is everyone doing today, Sarah? I don't know. I watched <laughs> Con today. I've done nothing. I, I, I honestly, I don't know. I feel like it's some weird, like, in, instrumental crisis. I'm just like, I don't know how I'm doing today. How about you, Corey? <laughs> doing all right. I had a, I had a bagel sandwich this morning. Had some coffee. Watched a movie with Ish and. Now I'm here. So yeah, I, I'm pretty much in Sarah's boat. I didn't do really much of anything today. <laughs> Mesa, were you, were you any more productive? <laughs> um, I will be later. Um, but right now, no. Well, this wow. pretty chill day. I think this probably makes me the most productive. I, I built furniture. I, I got physical things done. <laughs> so I'm normally I wouldn't take this opportunity to be like, huh, I did more. But uh, oh, I'm I feeling pretty something. good about I, myself. I did do something. I, I I I made my weekly stream schedule in Photoshop and I posted it. That's what oh I did. nice. Yeah, I, I was somewhat productive. Today. I am proud of you, Corey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, it, it is. It, it's it's been a week. It's going to be mm-hmm. a long two weeks for me personally. There's mm-hmm. there won't be any uh, guests on here for I want to say maybe another week or two just because. A lot of personal stuff going on, moving stuff around, so I don't want to make any promises I can't uh, uphold to. Mm-hmm. But with that out of the way, today is going to be very filled to the brim with gaming news. Most of that's probably going to be the four of us geeking the fuck out over the Resident Evil Showcase, which would be uh, mainly the Resident <laughs> Evil 8 Village. Wait, where's the I, I, I haven't even had a chance to look at it. Well, then you are in for, for a show. You yeah. are in for a... You're in for a treat. <laughs> Treat. I didn't hear about the demo when I downloaded it. But like that's it. That's literally it. Oh, you... so the so didn't play the it. Demo. The demo didn't... is a visual showcase. It's a vis. It's literally. Uh, uh, yeah. I think it's gonna be like the Resident Evil Seven demo. I think it's gonna be updated very, very slyly, and we're gonna be able to go in doors that we weren't able to go into. But that's just me theorizing, as I've been doing all week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Matt Pat. Um. It's Let, it's not a game theory. It's a horny <laughs> theory. Oh no, that, that's so much worse. <laughs> anyway, um, let's go to get into our new fun little weekly segment of uh, Metacritic guessing. Uh, Mafia Definitive Edition, not the original. What did it get? Uh, uh, I'm gonna say thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Damn. That's pretty harsh. I'm going to say like oh, 79. 80. Oh, 79. Okay. I'm yeah. going to say like 83. 63. Mesa, you were three points off. 76. Ooh. I think that's about right. Having beat it, it's not like fantastic. Like the story's pretty damn good. Gameplay, not so much. Um, The Division 2. I'm going to go and say like a solid 80. 70. Mm. Seven two, zero. I'm going to say 89. What did you guess, Sarah? Straight 80? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, 82. Oh, oh, wow. That sounds about right as someone who played a good amount of it. That sounds about right. <laughs> uh, that seems pretty, not like middle of the road. It's good. I just didn't stick with it. Yeah, I got um, about like halfway through with it, and then all my friends I was playing with kind of dropped off it so i was just like okay (laughs) uh this one i'm kind of surprised by this uh star wars jedi fallen order i'm gonna go with like a solid 85 yeah it's probably around there i think it should be higher i'll say (laughs) 86 and one point up i will say 87 (laughs) 
because I'm, I'm that bitch. <laughs> uh, Sarah wins then. Uh, 79. That is Dang. kind that's of That's a lot low. lower than I thought it was going yeah, to be. That's actually kind of low. It's kind of weird when it first came out, like uh, critical reception, just people talking about it, just like, oh, this game is like legit, legitimately fucking amazing, but general consensus seems to have uh, fallen out of order since then. Mm-hmm. Um, Resident Evil 7. Uh, 88. I'm going to be generous and say like 95. I'm going to say 80. What'd you guess, Sarah? 88. 86. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I that's not as high as I thought it would be, but Yeah, still, I thought it would be higher than that. Understandable. I, I think Yeah, I think 86 might be fair. Um I was streaming it the last couple of days. Sarah was actually on one of the streams yesterday and that was such a fucking return to uh to, to grace for the fucking series after Resident Evil 6, which I like Resident Evil 6, but it was a breath of, of like, fresh air. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Seven, such a good fucking game. Mm-hmm. And uh, the last one, the new, the newly released uh, Hitman 3. Uh, I'm going to give it a 90. Mm, I don't even know. Uh, 84. So you can go 80. Sarah and Corey are tied. It's uh, 87. So you're both oh. three points off. <laughs> oh, okay. Mesa gets to pick who wins. And the winner gets absolutely <laughs> oh. nothing. Uh, oh, Sarah, I guess. I don't know. Bunker, bunker, Damn, bunker, bunker. friggin' sweep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's just go ahead and dive straight on in. Um, Capcom held the Resident Evil Showcase last... Or not... What's, what's today? Sunday. Yes, on Thursday. And it basically, like, we, we all had a bunch of speculation going into, like, oh, are they going to do real re-releases or, like, remaster versions of the original three games? Uh, it was mostly just Resident Evil 8 stuff. Um, we'll, we'll get into everything uh, in more specific details, but it was Resident Evil 8 stuff. They announced the Maiden demo for Resident Evil 8, as we well as Reverse, a PvP shooter. And I, I think they touch on the movie, but that's whatever. And yeah, they, they literally touched it. on the movie. They were like, "Hey, a reminder: the movie's happening." Bye. No, it's not a. It's not a movie. It's a Netflix series. Yes. They, there's you. so they much Resident Evil stuff coming out. Like, yeah, they, they basically just like reminded us that it was happening, and like that was it. They're just like, "Yeah, yeah this, this is still happening." Bye. It's like, it, oh, but where's the date? <laughs> it's weird I, to think that even in terms of like release schedules, ever since two came out in 2019, we've had a Resident Evil main like a mainline Resident Evil game for three years in a row. Once eight comes out in May, I'm curious. I'm curious to think because. I know that they were saying that Resident Evil 4 remake won't be expected until uh, like 2024. Is that what they were saying? What was that? I I, I heard things about the Resident Evil 4 remake. Like we can't expect it probably until 2024. Yeah, we'll be be getting into that. They didn't actually touch on it in the um, the the showcase showcase, whatsoever. Yeah. But, but um, uh, I am curious about what's what's coming next, because a lot of people were saying that the showcase was very like underwhelming in the sense that it was like only 20 minutes long. You know, it th- was underwhelming in the fact that they were teasing with the like gifts on Twitter that they were using, like they were strategically using gifts from like the original trilogy and from Resident Evil 4. So it was almost like they were teasing what people wanted which was the port of the first three games not like the, the like remakes or anything and what people wanted to see the resident evil 4 remake they were almost teasing that but then they didn't even like show show those it was it was like a weird well, th- oh we know this is what you people want but they didn't show any up i think you brought up a fair point at least before if they had announced Resident Evil 4 remake, which would have been like a juggernaut of a uh, official announcements that it would have probably eclipsed Resident Evil 8 a little bit. They don't want to eat too much oh, no, into their, totally their, their food. What I before the event, what I was expecting was them to at least just confirm the fact they were doing a Resident Evil 4 remake and not like showing anything big, kind of like how they announced the Resident Evil 2 remake, like all those years ago, where it was just a dude standing in front of a screen and was like, we do it. Like, we're doing it. That's it. You're not getting anything else. I just kind of was imagining that's what they were going to do, was just have, like, one, like maybe the director or, like, the producer just be like, hey, 
we're doing this. It's very, very early. We just have a logo and that's it. Like I was, I was half expecting them to do it like, like that so that they wouldn't take away from all like the Resident Evil 8 stuff. This, this would probably open up a whole other different discussion we probably don't have the time for, but mm-hmm. I really wish the games industry kind of just adopted the movie model. Just like, yeah, I don't know. We're working on something. It might be out in 10 years. It might not. They, they, they just don't care if people know if things are like, even like in the earliest um, fetal stages of production. It's The game industry is like very well, tight. I think, about it. I think that's well, the reason for that is because um like directors and producers and actors like people who are involved with movies are a lot less reachable i feel and when uh if a game is like if a game is like revealed to be being worked on uh people will literally track down the the people working on it and like hound them and hound them and send them freaking death threats and shit uh, to get information out of them. And so it's like the harassment level is is there. I mm. think gamers are specifically equipped to be shitheads. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> but anyway, we, we, we could go on that for like forever. Um, but let's just go ahead and dive straight into the showcase, specifically for the Resident Evil 8 stuff. So just general <laughs> impressions. What did everyone think? It looks really fucking great. Like I... I don't think we were expecting anything less than that it's going to look really fucking great from a sequel to 7 that was taking everything that people loved in in 7 and everything that people wanted at least change. And I think, like, like, like they showed enough. Honestly, story-wise, I think they showed too much, at least in my honest opinion, because the one thing about Resident Evil 7 that really kicked so much butt was the mystery going into it. And while we know that there's still mystery with Resident Evil 8, like them revealing that there's finally like vam- vampires in Resident Evil and like werewolves and stuff, I just think they showed like a little bit too much. Like I would have liked to see a little bit less. Hey, see, I, I'm sorry, I have for? to. Um, <laughs> sorry, I looked over at the show notes <laughs> and I just fucking <laughs> saw. <laughs> Uh, Uh, for those of you that can't see the show notes um jose was typing uh, under vampire ladies mommy please step on me (laughs) everyone's so enthralled with giant Uh. vampire lady and no one's talking about werewolf chris so i'm just gonna be here in the corner of the room screaming (laughs) Until the end of time. Um, <laughs> until someone finally <laughs> l- listens to me. <laughs> I'm going to say my first impressions then. Um, so I th- I am fully enthralled with Resident Evil 8. Mm-hmm. I, I literally am sitting here just like every single day that passes by. I was like, is May 7th here yet? Is May 7th here yet? Is May 7th here yet? Because I literally <laughs> bought it that night, pre-ordered it that night on Amazon, uh, the deluxe edition. And uh, I can't wait for it to come in. But... Uh, the, the I think the one thing that I was holding out for that I that I I had a feeling they would bring back and I was really hoping and praying that they would bring back is the freaking is the merchant is just is the merchant and then not only that but they also are bringing back like the the um, briefcase inventory slots and so I know it's like small but it's a big deal and I loved Resident Evil Four. For for one for one of those one of those reasons being the inventory and another being the merchant, so I think specifically I'm happy for the inventory um, or the uh, cache whatever coming back because uh, replaying seven I didn't remember that uh, pulling up your inventory does not pause the game so like yeah. I'm scrambling around trying to fumble like oh shit I need to equip this weapon because it's not on my D pad it's on my quick select. Mm-hmm. And uh, th- that that's definitely horror in its own right, but just in terms of like fuck, why I can't? I'm fumbling right here. I can't grab my shit. It's, I am uh, curious. I am curious if the inventory will pause the game this time around. I would assume so. Coming off the heels of uh, two and three, mm. which uh, did that. But but with the so with the uh, merchant system back in place, that means that we're going to get to collect and find treasure, which I'm super excited mm-hmm. about. I yeah I didn't I didn't really care for the antique uh, coin system in seven. There was like I don't rem- remember how many coins specifically were there, but um I I did a whole freaking 
uh, video essay on Resident Evil 4, like how specifically the merchant and how finding treasure like incentivizes you to like go out of your way to kill enemies. I'm curious to see if that actually pushes eight into more of a action direction to like, yeah, don't run away from me. He's like, yeah, go the fuck out of your way. Murder every single person that comes across <laughs> you. Clear this whole village. <laughs> Whether you'll be suplexing people left and right, I don't I, I don't believe so. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about you, Mesa? Any uh, general impressions right off the bat? I, again, I literally have not seen any like like that initial tr- teaser that people were talking about the big vampire lady from. I didn't even see that. So I have literally seen nothing of village except the first. What trailer. do you think of the tall vampire lady? <laughs> Knowing <laughs> nothing about village. What do you think of the tall vampire lady? <laughs> I mean, I guess I like her hat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is a pretty dope hat. <laughs> I've literally seen She's one standing picture. standing directly in front of you, just looking down. I don't, down know, I don't even really know how tall she is. Ma'am, I really thing. like your hat. Oh, so <laughs> she's, she's like actually, one picture. She's approximately eight feet tall, which is, yes, which I is remember taller. Someone, which someone is taller, on Kotaku did the math. <laughs> which is taller than Nemesis. Yes. Mm, so It's like Nemesis, but cute. Are you saying that Nemesis what you, isn't, isn't? Yeah, what are you trying to say? Nemesis doesn't, to say Nemesis, Nemesis doesn't have a hat. That that's that's the key uh, difference, Mr. right there. Mister X but had a Mister X did have a hat. He was he was a little cutie chasing you around. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you have that mod where all he's wearing is a is a banana hammock that I has like, like has like the little tiny umbrella logo on it. Yeah, I do. I do like how they're like really digging into the uh, vampire and castle aesthetic, especially. If, so we'll, I'm going to jump around real quick just to the demo. Uh, the only enemy that attacks you is like one of the lesser vampires or whatever. She has like, okay, I think it's like really, really great. flies. So I played the demo. You, you played the demo, Jose. Yes. Corey, did you play the demo? Yes. Okay. So all three of us have played the demo. Mesa has, has not just heads up people like who have played it here and who hasn't. Okay. Continue. <laughs> oh yes. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so they're dedicated to like the vampire thing. Like she's able to like, not not disintegrate. She's able to like vaporize herself like into bugs and like fly around, able to like shoot them in your arms and stuff. Um, I I don't believe that there will be like legit vampires. It, it's going to be like some kind of weird virus nonsense. But for all intents and purposes, I really want the new Resident Evil games to just like like go completely fucking buck wild, make it like a weird anthology series where you're just like pulling out like traditional monster tropes and whatnot well she does take a chunk out of your neck if you're caught this is true. the eight demo and that's just flat out vampire shit like <laughs> i mean to be fair zombies also take chunks out of you yeah but just like the way the way that she does it is like so fucking vampire that honestly i i kind of mad that it took this long that we that like we're getting like virus vampires and virus werewolves like i think it's taken too long um I if you think... played metal gear solid 4 you'd t- you'd figure out uh it's not actually a vampire it's just nano machines the whole time so well expect, i don't think expect snake to pop up it's gonna be nano machines nano machines. hypnosis yes so and also i'm <laughs> um, if you know obviously we're gonna if we're going to be able to uh explore the entirety of this castle this castle is enormous and um not only that but if instincts about resident evil in general serve correctly the castle area is like maybe the middle part of the game and that eventually we'll probably be going down into a lab or the floors of the castle are going to be like first half of the game midpoint of the game well, no, because the first part I, of the uh, game is like what? going through the village, you know. I'm, I think I'm pretty much with Corey on this. Like, it, it's going to basically emulate the structure of four, where you're in the village, you go to the castle, then there's going to be some uh, lab. I, I don't think they're going to do a Resident Evil Four, like bring you to like a military island or anything like that. But mm-hmm. um, even in the in the trailer they put out, um, I, f- I forget the big big vampire lady's name. Uh, D- oh, Demetrioscu like, or something. Like, yeah, yeah, it's like Demetrioscu or something. I don't know how to spell it off the top, but but um, she's she's talking to someone, just like, oh, how did you let him escape? So, I, and they have a there's a shot in there where there's a, like a big giant fight between you and like I think it's like three enemies and like one big boy with a hammer. I'm just like, oh yeah, cool. They're they're doing the big first village fight. That's literally like the first ten minutes of Resident Evil Four. It's probably what like chases you into the mansion. Mm-hmm. 
like it's like oh you you, you can kill the the like tiny enemies but you can't kill the big one like turn back to resident evil one style where it's like we need to get somewhere safe where's the safest place oh this really dramatic mansion slash castle in the middle in in the middle of the woods mm-hmm. i do i do like that it looks like there's going to be more enemy variety because in seven it was basically just mold enemies there was like the regular ones one with the, like the blade arm and then what was uh basically liquor mold enemies and then uh the bosses like jack and marguerite's lurking around but here they had like what what looked like molt like a uh, monk cultists like hanging out in the dungeon like with like swords and shit. They have the villagers, they have werewolves, vampires. So it's looking like it's going to have a lot more variety in that regard as well. So so then Mesa hearing hearing <laughs> all of us talk about this mm-hmm. and all of the things since you haven't seen it, but yeah. just hearing all of these details, what what do you are you, does it make you more excited about it? How do you feel? I mean, I've always been interested. <clears throat> yeah, it sounds like a lot like, um, obviously, it sounds like a lot like RE4, um, which, yeah, they're, they're definitely doing that remake. Um, uh, yeah, like it just, it just, yeah, it seems seems pretty 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 interesting. Yeah, def- do, definitely, yeah. definitely gonna go for it. I do and like they that are, they specific. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Corey. I was just gonna. I was just gonna say the obvious, which is, which is, um, of course, this round they are still keeping to the first person point of view, um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty much it. With Ethan still being faceless, but <laughs> yeah, don't even get started on fears, that. Corey. That just that makes. Why the fuck can't we see Ethan's face? Like even in all the cons of dirt, he's like strategically like <laughs> when his face like this. I think I told Sarah like, this, I think it was yesterday, just like, I would be down for Ethan dying almost immediately in the story and yeah, he just plays and Chris. Just plays like werewolf Chris, I don't know. <laughs> Ethan dies like 10, 10 minutes in, it's like, okay, bye. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, you, you got your whole game, you got your 10 minutes of fame, goodbye. I, I do like that this is sticking to um, a first person perspective. I, I was talking to Sarah about it a bit yesterday when we were doing the stream for 7. I think it's just something very specific about the camera perspective that is inherently um, it, it, it's it puts itself more in a position to be horror and that everything's directly in your face. It uses like a I think that the FOV is like by default on 80. I'm not sure if you can change that on console, but everything's directly in your face. And if you're playing with surround sound uh, headphones, it's even worse because um, like like. Um, three is the remake of three is pretty action oriented and then two def not as action oriented as three, but it's still more action than seven. Like seven is, is just straight up horror. And I think the first, pe- first person cam perspective helps a lot. And, uh, they, they did do a call out with, in the, um, in the village, uh, showcase. I just like, yeah, uh, there's going to be an emphasis on blocking, which you can do in seven. So you're not even necessarily dodging attacks like you're going to have to let a dude swing at you in the face and like hold up your hands to uh try to mitigate some of that damage Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was never Uh, good at blocking (laughs) yeah i never (laughs) it was there but i never used it so i doubt i'm gonna use it again in this one uh Corey, you mentioned it earlier but uh the merchant is thick he He is he's very big He's a very. He is the duke. Oh no! He's yes. yeah. He's he's not he's not called the merchant. He's called the duke, mm-hmm. and he appears in like random spots. He just like he just like he's like shuffles himself into like little like corridors that he like sits in, and he's just like Ethan. Hello, come he looks like um, my way. He looks he looks like one of those royals in Elizabethan times that would eat a lot of cake. <laughs> but like again he just like squishes himself into like tiny corridors and he just sits there and he's like hello ethan i am kind of disappointed it's not gun. the same uh merchant from four but it is what it is i hope they uh, address his like I, weird fucking cousin i hope they address the uh the reason but in this one with the merchant like why nobody attacks the merchant well, you could attack and kill him in Resident Evil Four, and you would no, get your I'm, money back. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm I'm talking about I'm talking about like nobody in like in the surrounding area attacks the merchant. What's What's well, funny is he, like, um, sells them stuff that they can't get in the village, and if they kill him, then no if one. If you else look can at his that. eyes, it's it's hinted that he also he's also infected with a Plagueis. 
and so they wouldn't be attacking him. But they never really go in depth in it. It's just kind of speculation. I I, I do. I do suspect that it is probably a form of Las Plagas that we are oh, dealing yeah. with in this one. Or um, or it would most likely be a form of Uroboros than Las Plagas. Because <laughs> in Resident Evil 5, there was constant talk about them selling that virus to like the highest, the highest bidder and stuff. Yeah, so the Uroboros was... The um, that one. Yeah, and the Orosporus was like directly derived from the Plagas, and the mold mm-hmm. uh, has a very uh, similar uh, visual um, resemblance to it as well. Um, so, for for those of us that played the Maiden demo, let's, let's go into that specifically. What did everyone think? It was a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> well, yeah, I I mean, I suspected it was going to be really short, um, and they were saying that like. For those of you saying that, you know, who wanted a longer demo, um, just stay tuned for, you know, around springtime when they're going to they're going to release a meteor demo for every for all the consoles. But see, Um, I am I'm fully under the impression that this is going to go like the Resident Evil 7 demo because there was a bunch of doors that you couldn't go into. And what they I don't know if people remember the Resident Evil 7 demo, how that updated periodically like every couple of weeks they would put in a new like puzzle or they would put in a new a new item i have a strange feeling that that's what they might do with the maiden demo because that's because the original resident evil 7 demo was released on playstation 4 only x xbox didn't get it but then once the demo finished updating and was a complete demo X, Xbox got that demo i'm if I'm i remember hopeful, correctly i'm hopeful so that I, they'll do the same but I, I um I, I would have to look up the dates, but Res- the Resident Evil Seven demo also was also um coming up on the hype of PT, and so people kind of saw that demo as like emulating PT in a bit, like like how um what's the word I'm looking for? How obtuse it was with some of the puzzle solutions, and then adding stuff over time. Yeah, so some of that you can kind of like chalk it up to a bit of marketing, and I I, I, I would say like maybe that interest is. Oh, it's I understand that coming back to it, and with just. Which is how many doors in the eight demo that you can't open. And the one thing I also m- noticed is when you would press triangle to look at your items, once you got the amount of items that that was in the demo, only five of those ten item slots were uh, filled. Yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful that they'll do it. I'm, I'm just mostly saying so, that it, the reason why it was mostly there before was for marketing purposes and taking advantage of the kind of like hype and interest in PT. Uh, what were you going to say, Corey? So um, I do have a technical theory about about this. I'm not not to say that Sarah is um, wrong, but um, I, I for now I think the reason they came out with this very short maiden uh, visual demo is what they called it um, is because there was early on there was skepticism about um, about Resident Evil Eight. Uh, excuse me. But Resident Evil 8 not being able to run uh, as good on PS5 versus the Xbox Series X. So I think this was their way of being like, no, look at this demo for only PS5. This is a visual demo to reassure PlayStation players that Resident Evil 8 will run just fine on PS5. Well, another reason that it's on PlayStation 5 was uh, uh, industry leakers then revealed after the event that sony paid close to four million dollars for that demo oh, and that w- because sony has the the uh the ad the advertising slash the licensing rights for resident evil 8 so oh. which is why when you noticed during the uh, event it it always either mentioned playstation 5 first or when it showed the trailer it didn't show any X- xbox symbols on it it only showed place station that mm-hmm. there's also a precedence too for um I, I would say even to a greater degree with uh, resident evil 7 having vr um sp- specifically made because sony paid for it and yeah. it, uh, xbox doesn't necessarily have an equivalent for it but it also wasn't on steam either mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but no yeah that 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 demo legitimately only exists because sony paid them four million dollars for it <laughs> all right overall then. i would say like yeah the demo was shorts but 
it was a nice reminder just like hey yeah this is basically seven i think they did a, a damn good job with um with the setting setting up um maybe not some of the puzzles but just like walking through the environment and having to backtrack to see uh what's changed because you heard a noise behind you i think i um, saw it explained really well as a escape room yeah that makes sense i read mm-hmm. online one one publication described it as a horror escape room that pretty much was like the the ambiance of what resi void is is going to be which i 100 percent agree with mm-hmm. that's exactly what it felt like to me it mm-hmm. felt like a scary uh, escape room yeah it was um it was very short and sweet and um so, so the full game's uh, currently slated to be coming out on May 7th, which my birthday is May 6th. So technically, yeah, it's coming out the day after my birthday, but we're on the West Coast. So that means the game is going to be unlocking May 6th at 9 p.m. So I'm going to count that Happy as birthday my you. birthday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can only <laughs> hope that GameStop delivers my collector's edition on a very appropriate day. Uh, what does everyone think of Resident Evil Reverse? The, that looks uh, a lot of fun, and people can shut the fuck up. <laughs> for, for people that don't know, it's a it's looking to be a PvP shooter where you're playing as like uh, from protagonists from the series as well as um, mm-hmm. stuff like Tyrants, Mister X, and Nemesis and whatnot. It's almost looking like the first person to die turns into one of the monsters and then and then it's then it becomes like a dead a uh, uh, dead by daylight style but everybody else has to work to kill them at least that's what it's looking like to me which i'm 100 percent down for i think people are being just too fucking harsh on it i th- correct me if i'm wrong they said it was going to be packaged with uh village right yes it- if you buy village you get free access to it okay so it's kind of like the resistance situation where if you bought three you got access to that you need to buy a any version of eight doesn't have to be the like deluxe or the collectors to get access to this i don't anticipate that i'll play it for very long or whether that what if, if i'm using um resistance as a basis um i don't think it'll necessarily be Which, that honestly, great but, but it is a dumb it's it is, not I'm, the same thing <laughs> no, I understand. Like, it's just like as a basis for president. Uh, it's honest, obviously not going to have the production value of the main game. Yeah. But that being said, it, it's a free thing. It's not detracting from the quality of the main game. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's a free thing. No reason to like outright condemn it. Uh, what were you going to say, Corey? It's basically kind of like a Resident Evil Brawl game. You know, are they going to have tripping physics? <laughs> maybe every five steps you take you just fucking slam on your face <laughs> yeah <laughs> technically you could trip over zombies in two and three in the I, remakes you you could you would stumble but you wouldn't full-on fall on well, your like, face trip you would like stumble over that yeah so. what about you mace any interest in pvp resident evil I mean, sure i, I never I, I never have to play uh three remake and i didn't play the resistance mode it's literally the first I heard of this. What you guys were talking about? Oh, wow. So, um, yeah, again, absolutely nothing. I've been busy. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, sure. I mean, it just sounds like mercenaries. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, free. Sure. It's something to play. Yeah, why can't not? Ar- can't argue with that. Okay, yeah, well, let me say no, no. <laughs> I just hope they have a. I hope they have a buttload of um. DLC like they did with Resident Evil 7. Mm-hmm. 7 had a lot of really interesting DLC. There was um there was a free not a hero which is kind of like a very small like little mini campaign it's like 2 or 3 hours. But it's there really was... good and it had no right to be free. <laughs> mm-hmm. There was we play as Sarah called him a hill hillbilly uncle. I said um, hillbilly Joe or something. I forget because I couldn't I, remember his name. I think his name might actually be Joe. I, I, yeah. I, I, it's, <laughs> it might yeah. be. Oh, this is, is it? Show, I'm pretty sure. Oh shit. <laughs> or I think I called him hillbilly Bayou man too. I forget what I. Actually I, I, be- called I believe. I believe. It doesn't matter. Him. He punches zombies with his fists. He does, <laughs> and then he gets super fists, and he punches things harder. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it had that. So it had like two campaigns. It had like a what if scenario with Zoe. There was like a morbid version of I think it was like Blackjack or Twenty One, and there was like a it was almost like a mercenaries like arcade mode where you have to feed Jack and like kill enemies in the area. 
and then and, there's, uh, actually, and then there's literally don't uh, or Ethan must die. Oh yeah, which is <laughs> which like was just, basically extra hard. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it actually it actually kind of stands out now. That I think about it that two and three didn't really have two had some free uh, DLC. I think it was called like the survivors thing. It's like three kind of yeah, not mini campaigns, like little mini levels that reuse levels and assets from the mm-hmm. main game. Uh, there's no real story school. to it. But uh, it was something, but like not, nothing on the same level or scale as the Resident Evil 7 DLC. Um, let's go into the remake of what is my favorite game of all time, uh, Resident Evil 4. So Video Games Chronicle has reported that the studio behind the Resident Evil 3 remake, uh, M2, has had their role in the upcoming 4 remake significantly reduced with Capcom Division 1 taking over production. Uh, This comes on the heels of disagreements between the developer and publisher, with Capcom desiring greater changes from the original game, and M2 aiming for a one-to-one remake. Uh, The remake is being partially rebooted and is now targeting a 2023 release. So it's a bit further out than people were initially speculating. Mm -hmm. Uh, Um, And also, just a heads up, all of this was uh was cons- was a pr- uh a bunch of resident evil leakers came out and pretty much confirmed this so yeah from what they've heard so then, from their sources is that this is all true so then my my curiosity is that because you know we've been saying that we've had a resident evil game pretty much every year for a while now and uh which means since resident evil 8 comes out in a few months and um resident evil 4 remake comes out in 2023 we might not actually get a resident evil game in 2022 i'd be uh, fine with that let it breathe a bit yeah, oh, Veronica I, remake. I let's would, go <laughs> I, I, I would be okay with that and the one thing that people listening need to understand the reason why this is happening is because um the resident evil 2 remake the majority of the people really really liked it uh, there was a very tiny outspoken few who claimed that it diverged too much from the original which when you think about it it kind of didn't um and then when resident evil 3 came out that that very small minority of people became a very loud vocal minority of people because there was a bunch of things in resident evil 3 in the remake that they took out that was in the original like like the clock tower set, set, set pieces the whole uh choice yeah. system because for those who don't know Resident Evil 3 had a sort of choice system to it where whenever Nemesis attacked the screen would like do this like 90s fade to white and then it gave mm-hmm. you two yeah. options you could either fight him or you would run run away um, and people I personally didn't mind that not coming back there's a bunch of people who were very angry that didn't come back and like you guys mentioned the fact that the clock tower was completely taken out yeah there were multiple locations that you never even fully get to explore or were just completely taken out but also people have to keep in mind that this was a very loud vocal minority of people like it wasn't like a huge audience of old school Resident Evil fans. It was a very small, small vocal min- minority. I feel like and even extrapolating so, beyond that is that mm, the general consensus would be that like two remake is absolutely fantastic and three yeah. is a damn good game, but it's lacking a lot of the production value of two. And there's a, just generally more missteps in there than the it, two. It just it, it unfortunately felt like three was an afterthought for them. Like, oh, I guess we we did two, so we have to do three. All right, it's let's very just hard. It I can't speak right now because yeah. I adored the remake of three. <laughs> oh no, I mean I absolutely no, I, did, I, but I, just I, like I, speaking I, comparatively. I many issues. I just I'm it. I'm a salty yeah. snail because yeah. it could have been better, you know. If you're a salty snail, then shouldn't you be dead? Uh, wow. She has a point. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, point, point. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, doesn't that kill snails? Gary um, would be offended. <laughs> I guess building off of the divergences, uh, to me, uh, I, I would say like absolutely two and three needed like a remake. Like even if they were one to one remakes, they're, they're PS one games. They're like in desperate need of it. Uh, but they still hold up, which is why people wanted Capcom to like port over the the original three. I would say yes really, in really terms badly. of preservation, but I would say two and three are effectively pretty damn good replacements instead of. Oh no, they are. Uh, but they in the are, case of four, yeah. In the case of four, I would say it's already a damn perfect game. Like there's been HD um, 
remakes or just ports, whatever, over the years. And I don't want a one-to-one remake of 4, because that game's already perfect as is. So just go fucking crazy. Go and add stuff. Take stuff out. Whatever you need to do. Um, If they, I know they're for a fact they're not going to do tank controls, because that's not what uh, contemporary players are accustomed to. Um, But if if they take out the tank controls, they need to fundamentally change everything about the environment and the way that enemies are able to attack you, because the entire original game is... Um, is designed around that limitation. Well, technically, so I, they already know how to do that from the two and three remake because two and three were 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 built on tank controls, and enemies attacked you a specific way in the original games. While in this one, it's completely different. Yeah, but this is also different in that, um, in terms of enemy speed, because they're not just zombies lumbering at you. They have weapons. They can sprint and whatnot. So if they add more abilities to them. It would bring it more in line to what that original challenge would be. Like if they if they did their regular slow lumber, or I guess like initial sprint, then lumber towards you, it, it wouldn't be the same if you're able to duke around and everything. So um, I would I would say they need to increase their aggression overall. Also, uh, we ha- I think it's important to remember that after. Resident Evil 7 came out. Um, Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 3 Remake followed. And they took a lot of uh, inspirations from... um, Or a lot of... Not inspirations, but a lot of just mechanics that they used in Resident Evil 7 uh, towards the remakes. So what we're probably going to see specifically... They're using a lot of similar assets that they that they are familiar with from Resident Evil 4. We're probably going to see Resident Evil 8... Uh, mechanics implemented into Resident Evil 4, the remake. That's why we're not going to be seeing it until 2023 because it's going to take a while. I didn't even know that it was such a meme, but uh, ever since Resident Evil 7 brought in the bolt cutters, they've been in every single game since then, and then they're in... Yeah. So so. A lot of the Resident Evil 2's assets were the exact same assets that were in 7, including the uh, opening up the call box using the knife with the exact same call box the exact same knife and the exact same uh animation that ethan does yep opening it so they took a lot from resident evil 7 but that's not a bad thing because that just helped them make the game faster because it's like oh we have all these assets that are just sitting here yeah it's more just like a joking thing versus like she's like oh they're being lazy just like i don't give a shit i i I like the bolt cutters it's nice and red you have the asset it it actually makes it feel like the same universe and that's in that sense, yeah, you know, adore yeah, totally. asset reuse. Yeah, I love it every single time I see it. I don't <laughs> want to see it more. Go crazy with it. Do him a fucking Go crazy with it. mask or something. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Uh, let's see. I think that's about it for the Resident Evil stuff. So we can go ahead and jump into the. Or does anyone else have anything specific they want to talk about in regards to Resident Evil? Uh, I'm just glad that we're getting a uh, mainline Resident Evil this year. And if oh, we, uh, really, would... really thing for everybody saying that w- we don't need a Resident Evil in a in a year that we're dealing with a pandemic. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> like, shut up. Like, uh, video games I, are comforting in general. Um, yeah, I mean, I get it that when Resident Evil Three launched last year and its and its opening was like using like live action like uh, footage that they shot for that. It's like, oh, there's a pandemic running through raccoon. Like, yeah, that shit was like, okay, this is just a little bit. But it's like at the same time, like Resident Evil's pandemic, we don't have vampires and hot eight foot tall vampire <laughs> ladies walking <laughs> around. Shut up. <laughs> like, um, and I, I will say this much. Uh, I. I mean, this is not based on any sort of uh, proof or anything. Just a just an idea in my head that if if we do if we do happen to get a Resident Evil game in 2022, it most likely will be Revelations Three. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, I like this. I really like the direction Sorry, weirdness totally. they do in terms of the story for Revelations. But I mean, I, I would really have to go back and and revisit one and two. But the the way that they play, just in terms of like, in, in, just in terms of gameplay, it just feels like knockoff Resident Evil. So I hope they they give it the production value that the series pr- basically deserves. Mesa, what are you trying to say, my dude? Oh, I was just I was just making a joke about uh, RE Seven being Resident Evil Revelations Three. <laughs> I mean, you're kind of not wrong. The uh, Revelations game, more wise, have always taken place in in between stuff. 
mm-hmm. and they've kind of been like, oh, what has this character been doing in between these two games? Here is mm-hmm. our explanation yeah. for that. Yeah. And it's like, to be completely fair, I'm 100% down to have a uh, Revelations 3. Just, I would personally have to see what characters that it covers, because the one thing that, that I like about the Revelations games is they bring back characters not mm-hmm. counting Barry, like, Revelations Burton. 1. But well, yeah, but 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 like they bring back characters that we haven't seen in. They need to bring back Rebecca Chambers. They a hundred percent. She was in the movie and she just sat there and cried all the all the time. Okay, but like, (laughs) okay, that's true. She's not really a a field operative anymore. She's a scientist. Yeah, Um, let her let her be a scientist. Fine, Billy Cohen. Bring back Billy Cohen. Bring back my man, God Capcom. I know he's out there. He's doing something. Bring him back. Plot twist for Resident Evil Eight. Uh, Chris kills Ethan almost immediately. Barry Burton bursts in. He's the main character. Chris turns into a werewolf. Barry Burton pulls out his giant handgun, his hand cannon, and blows his head off. Boom! The end. (laughs) (laughs) And then Joe. And then Joe walks in. Man, Barry, you were almost dog food. And then, (laughs) and then, then Barry kneels down and and he touches werewolf Chris. He says, "Is this this Chris's blood? Is is this Chris's blood?" I, I have I have a tiny little oh no but I can't but I can't let them oh that's there so we go oh, they are there is there is the boys oh did you end up so I actually do have a question for Sarah did you end up oh. snagging the collector's edition I did it, congrats it, thank you it was a lot more expensive than I thought it was going to be it was like two hundred and ten dollars yes. it was like yep. oh. I was, was going, I was going to, but I'm going to get it on Steam anyway, so I'm like, eh. It is also a GameStop exclusive, like all the other ones have been. I'm not so, giving them another cent of my money, so I wasn't going to pay that but, for that anyway. Like, if you can't tell up here, I have the Leon from the Resident Evil 2 Collector's Edition, and I have Joe from the 3 Collector's Edition. And these are very nice statues for how much they were. That's why the... I'm curious about why the Resident Evil 8 one is like $210 when these were like 150 because I'm wondering like, is the Chris statue bigger? Is it like more detailed? Like, I don't know, but I am going to well, 100% put it. Also, you other. have to, you have to take into account that, um, well, wait, no. Cause the regular edition of, of Resident Evil 8 is $60 on PS5, right? Yes. Okay. So it's not like a price. Yeah, they're not doing a no. price hike quite. So yet. that's yeah. why I'm curious about why it's more expensive. I do have a crazy theory though that the that the Chris statue that they're showing us isn't the statue that we're getting, and we're going to get like a werewolf Chris statue. I would say they're not like showing anything, or it's just that generic like him just standing there. It's a dumb theory. I get it. I understand. But just the but to me, it's the fact that it's like fifty dollars more expensive when it's basically the same. So apparently the same statue as like these. The, but wouldn't that be the only reason I would say that's a bad theory is because that opens them up for legal action for falsely yeah, displaying a, what you're going to be purchasing. Well, also that's a well, that would be a major there spoiler too. Cutscenes in games where they change stuff to hide. Well, that, that's cutscenes versus like a physical product you're purchasing. But that doesn't make any sense. I digress. To me, but okay. Yeah. Um. Let's go ahead and jump over to some other stuff. Uh, Valve CEO Gabe Newell has confirmed that several single-player games are in active mm-hmm. developments. Uh, this precedes the release of 2020's Half-Life Alex, a 13-year return to the series' la- la- last entry back in 2007. Does anyone care about Valve working on new games? I sure as fuck do. I love Half-Life. Um, well, I guess I, I include Left 4 Dead. But I, I could go for another portal. <laughs> As long as I could go for a portal into the Valley of Gods, then I care. If it's not, then I don't fucking care anymore. Yeah, that's about portal is pretty much all I care about. I, I really care. need I to play Half Life Alex, and I will have I would, space for VR soon. I would like to know what's on the Borealis. Um, the, it, 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 yeah, that's it. Pretty much it. I honestly I don't even really care about Half Life Three. Just what's on the Borealis. Well, it wasn't there a, uh, it was like the lead writer, and he came out like forever yeah. ago, and he put mm-hmm. out like this whole spoiler for like Half-Life, th- what Half-Life 3 was supposed to be. What was his, what was his Half-Life 3, which was the original one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he basically posted like a fan fiction, which was what his Half-Life 3 was, he just changed the names of characters, but people couldn't mm-hmm. know who those characters were, because mm-hmm. yeah. he was like legally able to but- like 
posted under the name Half Life. So I was like, oh, I wrote this fan fiction that was really just like what he wanted Half Life Three. But um, but spoilers. Um, I'm not spoiling. Sorry, I'm not going to spoil anything. But the end of uh, <laughs> the end of Alex changes a lot. Already, I have so. I have read what it is, and I am very excited for the future of Half Life. Yep. I mean, Half Life is still basically my go to game. Just like, I don't know, I have like 10 minutes. What do I play on my PC? Like, Half Life 2 is still one of the best games of all time. I mean, the only thing I can ask is that they don't make their fucking games VR exclusive because I can't play Half Life Alex. I, because I get sick as soon as I throw the VR headset on. So, I with, think- and plus, people with, dis- with disabilities who can't use VR won't even be able to play it either. So, I. It, if valve does what like sony did where when they released like vr only playstation 4 games and then like two months later they got non-vr patches that's what i'm hoping valve does because there is mods that allow you to play alex without vr but it's kind of janky because it was Mm -hmm. meant to be played only in vr Mm -hmm. so i only hope that some of these like single player games coming out one of them is just valve's like non-vr version of half-life alex so i can actually play that game and enjoy that that game instead of like having to drop six hundred dollars on a headset that I'm never going to use because I don't want to throw up all over my apartment. <laughs> I th- I think I'm in the same boat in that I really want them to make like, it doesn't like obviously the quality is not going to be the same if they make what's basically just a two D panel version of the game, but sp- specifically for them targeting. I, I'm going to use VR only in quotations because I do want that version that people can play on two D panels even if it's not as polished if there's some bugs whatever where everything just doesn't function I, I i still want those versions to exist either way um but half-life alex from what i've seen it and what i've read people talking about i haven't experienced it myself but because they take what's so inherently special about vr and using it in such a way that it's not necessarily able to be replicated via normal methods of input like even on a keyboard so I, I think that they're really pushing the medium forward and that VR is absolutely going to be the future of games. And unfortunately, that, that side effect is that there are people that are going to be left behind and that's they should and that people that and instead of leaving people behind, they you should make versions that people can still play. Yeah, basically. I mean, the whole like leaving people behind is not what gaming is about because gaming is meant to be for every everybody. That includes if you have a disability or if you don't. And the fact that, like, it's great that Valve wants to push VR, and I'm totally off for VR becoming bigger. But even, like, one of the biggest VR chat services, which is VR chat, has a non-VR mode. Because they know people, not many people, not a lot of people can use VR. So I feel like we should start becoming more accustomed and more understanding that VR games are going to come out. And they're going to be VR for, like, the maybe the first year, like, the first couple of months. But then that, that they should have non VR patches after them. And again, I think Sony's a great example of that where they put out a bunch of VR exclusive games, which was fine. But then months down the line, they, they included free non VR patches with those, with those games. And of course I've, I've read articles of people from valve being like, Oh, well, it was never meant to be played without VR. It's like, well, then you're shutting off a fan fan base of people that a can't use VR because of a dis- disability B can't use it because they're like me who just have severe motion sickness and just who can't or see people who can't afford a $600 VR headset. Like, I just think that, yeah, it's great to be pushing the medium like they are. And I think it's the future, but the future should also be friendly to those who can't catch up with the future. Mesa, you're a big uh, VR user slash proponent. So what, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I'm in, I'm in many camps. I do want, you know, as many people to be able to experience these games as possible. And if VR is a hurdle, then we have to, we have to understand, deal with that. But at the same time, I don't, not saying that it would, but you know, if hmm, I don't, I don't want it to limit what VR can be though. Um, And I don't think it can. I just think that people that, yeah, VR games should also understand the fact that they have a lot of hurdles to get people to mm-hmm. even play their games. And mm-hmm. I think we understand like, oh, like, yeah, we'll have it VR exclusive for the first year. But then after that, we're going to drop this patch that makes it playable without VR. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but uh, yeah. go ahead, Mesa. 
Mm-hmm. Under, yeah, under, yeah. Um, I mean, like, like, like for me personally, like with my personal VR headset, like, like I don't use it very often. Not because I don't want to use it or I can't use it, but because I mean, because it's um, because uh, it's a uh, it, it, my personal VR headset's pretty uncomfortable for me. First, and um, it looks like most on the market are going to be uncomfortable for me. So I'm just kind of stuck with waiting for one that's good for me. Um, 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 and so like, I, I kind of, I, 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 I understand. Um, cause like I haven't played half-life Alex either. Um, um, though at least, at least with VR, the, the price is coming down quite a bit. Um, with like the, you know, like the Oculus Quest to being just two ninety nine, and that's an independent headset that you can connect to your computer if you want to. Um, but so yeah, um, with the price coming down, I think yeah, the price is coming down very uh, in a very good way. Um, but usability, yeah, I, I, I just, I guess I'm just afraid of a developer deciding not to do something because it would be harder to translate to keyboard and mouse or controller. Right. And I don't want that, but I still want everyone to be able to experience everything. So I, I guess that's a little bit of a crossroads here. Right. Uh, what about you, Corey? Have you tried VR or anything like that? Uh, so I have a PS VR. Um, I haven't actually hooked it up in a long time. Um, but, uh, for what I have played, um, you know, like beat saber and like, um, other just sort of like smaller games here and there. Um, it, it was fun. I, I really, I really think the most, uh, addictive one and, and the most, um, common one that I can play is beat saber because it's just so much fun. Um, but, uh, other than that, uh, I haven't really got uh, gotten uh, too many chances to play VR, and I never really got a chance to play um, Half Life Alex. Mostly because I also wasn't super into the Half Life series. Um, I I actually never even played it, so. <laughs> but that's just me. I'm gonna get a lot of gasps for that. <laughs> I I'm I'm just gonna silently judge you. Mm-hmm. I I played the. I played Half Life when it came out on, uh, I think it was the Orange Box, like way back in 360 and PlayStation 3 days. Mm-hmm. That's when I played it, and I feel like it's one of those games where, kind of like how I feel about like the Beatles, where I understand what they did for music, and that's great, like good for you. I'm just not into them. Same, same with Half Life. I know what it did for gaming. I played them all. It's just not my thing. Like I find it honestly kind of boring, and I find. Gordon Freeman, kind of boring. <laughs> I, I, I will, I will extrapolate from that. Like, Silent protagonists are boring as shit. Like, because it's like they expect you to care about him so much when like everyone else around him is like leagues more interesting. And it's I like say, hey. I will say Half Life Two specifically is a good game to play if you're bummed out because every single person you talk and they're just like, holy shit, it's Gordon Freeman. You're the shit, dude. Holy crap. It's you. You're a legend. So I'm just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, every time I see that, I just hear like AOL dial-up noises behind Gordon Freeman's eyes. I just hear like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, I, like I, 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 it's great that Half-Life Alex is really great. And I'm here for everybody who was super excited excited about it and who got what they wanted out of it i just think that it's a good and a bad example of good how vr can be but also bad of how vr is restricted from so many from from like so many people Mm -hmm. that's just me Mm -hmm. let's let's move into a bit of a headache that happened early friday morning and was actually resolved late friday nights at Um, midnight (laughs) <laughs> early friday morning uh which by the way a company kind of trying to pass um very bad negative news will typically do it friday mornings when uh sites aren't as likely to cover and it passes by the weekend so no one's going to talk about it because everyone's off work uh but early friday morning xbox became in for 
began informing Xbox Live customers that the prices for the subscription for gold would be doubling, uh, bringing a full year's worth of service from $60 to 120 the, uh, the gold team stated that in many markets, the price for Xbox Live Gold has not changed for years, and in some markets, it hasn't changed for over 10 years. Um, Xbox Live itself has become a redundant service in the face of Game Pass, which includes the benefits of the former while providing the best value in gaming. And... Um, so, so basically, even if I think it's basically easy for anyone to see that this entire move is just a push people into Game Pass and we'll, we'll get into or there was a not an article, uh, an, an analyst basically went and just said, yes, there was no reason for them to raise the price. This is 100 percent a move to push people into buying Game Pass. And the way to do that was to make the default option so undesirable that they pick the better option. Um, but this being said, uh, platform holders charging players for the right to play online and access free to play games is a relic of the past. And you'll be hard pressed to find a single comparable service that isn't provided for free on PC where you don't have to play, pay to play online. Um, oh, you technically I, have to pay for internet. <laughs> oh, but that's the thing though. If you're, if you're playing on Xbox, you're paying for internet and to play online. Yeah, right? no, no. You can buy McDonald's. Right. But there is there is a lot of backlash to <laughs> this, <laughs> and Xbox rescinded all plans for this uh, the same day later on that at night. Midnight, at yeah. midnight. And they also announced that free to play games are now going to be free to play. You will not need uh, Xbox Live Gold to play those. Yeah, they said that that's being rolled out. I think they said before the spring, if I remember. They said, like, like they said, they're actually trying to roll it out now, but they said it's going to take a little bit. Mm. But yeah, this was incredibly sketchy, especially after I found out that if you bought like X, that that the Xbox Live Gold family account was being pushed up to a hundred dollars a month or oh, something wow. like that, and I was like, oh my god! I was like, no, because like, because like at first, because I I'm a Game Pass sub, um. I, it's 100% the best deal in gaming. It's great. I haven't bought an Xbox game in fucking ages because I could just download it. Um, at first, I was like, okay, they're pushing people to Game Pass. That's fine. But then I was reading at how many people, because I know Zombie, Zombie brought up the fact that how expensive it, it would be for her, for her family to have Xbox Live Gold. And I was like, oh, that's a shit ton of money to pay monthly or like even to pay yearly. I was like, that's not okay. And people all day were like pointing out how much they would have to pay for their like families or how much they would have to pay for themselves. And then Jose, you even brought up like, like, oh, if you're not using your X Xbox, get ready to just cancel your, 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 your sub until a game comes out that you really want to play. Yeah. That, that's what I typically do in general with most subscriptions. Like if I see something I want, I'll re up my subscription if it's a, if it's a month by month. And I'll just I'll go and do the thing I need or, or no, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll buy the subscription. I'll immediately cancel it. So I get it for that month and then just do whatever. If I need to resubscribe, I do it. I, I would recommend basically everyone do that universally for everything. But I think the thing that's most disappointing about the situation is that Xbox has garnered so much fucking goodwill over the mm -hmm. last couple of years, yeah, like specifically was, through Game Pass as well. Yeah. It was incredibly testy. Of, of them i feel like they were kind mm -hmm. of hoping that people would go off their good goodwill and be like oh they just want people to go on game pass this will get so many more people to go on game uh game pass at least that's what i got from it but it's like I mean, said, I, you raise your prices up to a hundred dollars a fucking month that's not goodwill to anybody that's just you know, nickel and diamond mm -hmm. people it's it's like yeah game pass is a damn good value and i think any anyone who likes games should probably try the service out but like making such an aggressive push by punishing people that haven't migrated over that that's that's not very consumer friendly whatsoever. Yeah. Like, like mean, tell people the incentives, maybe give them a another trial discount or something. I don't know. The one thing I want to bring up is how people were like, "Oh, good guy, Microsoft for like changing it back." N no, it th they're still shitty for doing it in the first place, for having to like hopefully garner the good the goodwill of the people. Mm -hmm. to be able to be like oh we can raise the prices and no one will bat will like bat an eye it's like no that's still shitty what you did and they try to pass it off friday morning yeah. too. and then be like oh don't worry games are gonna go free to play with without gold now that should have been in the first place i i think um i, I hit it a little bit in the uh in the write-up here 
Um, I don't think you should ever have to pay to play online. Like on, on PC, you, you don't pay. Like we're, we're not talking about like paying your your ISP, your fucking Comcast or whatever. That that's its own thing. But there is no reason why you should have to pay either Sony or Nintendo or Xbox to to pl- to play online. Like the games you're playing, those are not hosted by the platform holders. Those are still hosted by the devs. It's still the exact same practices that they're doing on PC. If you want a chat thing, there's there's third party stuff. We're using Discord right now. That's that's completely a free service. I know someone brought up like platform level moderation, which is nice, but I don't think that justifies like a yearly subscription just to hold shitheads online yeah. accountable. So I, I, I think like the the pay to play online is such a relic of the past that Xbox did back on the OG Xbox, which, you know, what back then it was it was unheard of being able to play a console online. So, yeah, credits to them back then. But um, that, it, it's just such a relic of the past. And like, that's what I liked about Game Pass. It's just like you're getting a hell of a value for what is it? it's ultimate that has gold in it. That's 15 bucks a month. I'm like, yeah, $15 mm-hmm. a month for this and incredible service. Like Fuck yeah. Constantly $1 for your first month. Like they're constantly running this like $1 deal mm-hmm. for like yeah. your first month, which is how I signed up to Game Pass. I wasn't a part of Game Pass at first because I didn't see any point to it. And then during E3, Microsoft was like, hey, here's our games with gold ultimate, where it gives you gold and game pass for a dollar. I think it was your first three months. And I was just like, well, shit, it's a dollar. Uh, I, I have a dollar in right, right, right here. Take it. And then I ended up using game, game pass far more than I thought I was going to, which is why I stayed signed up to it. But like Microsoft is actively doing so much to push people to at least try it for like a month, like almost fucking almost every physical xbox like microsoft published xbox game that i have bought comes with a free month of game pass mm-hmm. I, like, I think it's just more so like that like, you buy comes with a free three months of game pass yeah i think it's definitely more just of um the game pass as a strong inherent value whereas as as a consumer you're not getting something out of xbox live that you shouldn't already be getting for free but um in the chats uh glorious war points out that a lot of people that they know aren't interested in game pass because they play two to three games a year such as fifa call of duty or a big open world game so why would they subscribe to a more expensive service which in this case would be game pass and like outside of the value it gets like I, i totally understand that um, but but like I guess I, it's not so much a counter so much as a compliment. Just like I don't think people should even have to pay for for to play online. Oh, also don't forget, uh, Game Pass subscribers are also now getting EA Play completely free. That's true. So like, and that's and that I think was like twenty dollars a month because it got uh, you access to like all the brand new e- 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 EA games like a week early. So it's like. That's adding twenty dollars onto that value, which one hundred percent makes Game Pass the best of value right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I guess I've kind of gone on for a while. Mesa and Corey, I'm interested in what the two of you have to say on the overall story. You know, if, if you want to extrapolate anything from there. Um, I mean, I only just heard about this today, like very briefly, and then you expanded on it. Um, cause I had, I had no idea this was going on, but I'm surprised you didn't see it. Cause Twitter blew the fuck up <laughs> I, like, I, in the morning. Twitter was like, excuse us. <laughs> well, I, that's just because I, I'm not, I'm not, so, a big, to be fair to Corey. I think he saw that everyone was talking about the tall lady from resident evil. And he just dipped out of Twitter for the whole week. And he's like, fuck this. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, oh, no, tall, no, lady no. Talk? tall lady talk. <laughs> like I, I like, uh, don't get me wrong. I like her, but for different reasons. Um, but I'm not a big, like, I'm not, like, a huge Xbox person, so that's probably why I wasn't really following that news. Um, I mean, I do use Xbox Game Pass, but for PC, that which is why I'm able to uh, download and stream the medium this Friday. <laughs> plug. <laughs> Shameless Same. plug. <laughs> Great. Forgot about that. Thanks yeah. for reminding me. <laughs> um, you're welcome. But, uh... Yeah, no, I don't really have anything to add. I think you guys all said it all. Mm-hmm. What about you, Mesa? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm pretty much in the same boat. Um the only thing is um I just I I, I really don't understand what they were, what, what they thought was going to happen. 
Um, unless, of course, this is exactly what they thought was going to happen, mm-hmm. um, which we shouldn't, you know, it's, it's very possible that the, that's the case. Yeah, um, k- kudos to them for walking back on it, but it shouldn't have happened in the first place. Um, yeah, like $120 for gold? Really? That's Come on, guess. guys. That's insane. Come on, that, that, that's not even like a $10 increase. That's literally fucking double the price. Yeah. <laughs> We're still in a pandemic. Come on. <laughs> if anything, you should be lowering the price. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Let's Good see. Uh, Hitman 3, the long-awaited follow-up in the Hitman fr- franchise, dropped on January 20th, albeit it had some confusion in regards to the backwards compatibility with its uh, predecessors, Hitman 1 and 2. Uh, for those unaware, in Hitman 2, you could re-download the levels from Hitman 1 to play them from the same launcher, which came with the uh, gameplay additions that they made to two as well as the graphical overhaul and whatever associated things. Um, so it's going to be the same practice for Hitman three, except for the two previous games. Um, but unlike the previous titles, uh, Hitman three was releasing exclusively on the Epic store as far as PC is concerned, meaning that users that own steam versions of the prior games, um, would not be able to take advantage of it. They would have to rebuy Hitman one and two through the Epic store Um, The catch with this being that those that bought Hitman 3 within the first 10 days of launch would receive Hitman 1 for free, but the sequel they they couldn't do the same thing for, so they discounted the price uh, by 80% in order to get people in there, but it's still not a perfect solution. Uh, IO Interactive, the developer, and Epic have since tweeted that both companies are looking forward to are looking to resolve the issue and guaranteeing that players won't be required to repurchase a game that they already own on a separate platform. Um, as a quick side note, the issue is non-existent for the console versions, and this is entirely just a PC issue that exists because of different store- digital storefronts. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and save the second part of this till after, but anyone have any thoughts on the digital storefront mm-hmm. snafu? No, I... Care less about uh, well, this is um, <laughs> this is the cost of having a guaranteed Hitman Four. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that I'm probably not going to play the new Hitman games until they come out with like a pack or a bundle for all three games. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I could care less about bald generic assassin men. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, that's literally. His point, to be fair, he's yeah. supposed to be as generic as possible. <laughs> it's not, a ball- it's not about the baldness of, of the hitman, it's Literally. about the shenanigans that you can get into. <laughs> so you can put on a chef's outfit and no one bats an eye. Back the same series that gave us the gimp nuns, the you, you weird beat up, like BDSM nuns. You can beat up people with the same banana like 50 times in a row, it's magical. I just I get why people love these games and that's great. And I'm all here for it. I just, I'm terrible at stealth games. Like me and a friend tried to co-op Splinter Cell Conviction and I almost drove across the country to like strangle him. So (laughs) (laughs) I can't can't, like, I'm not good and I don't care about stealth games unless they give me an option to like brutally murder someone without um, stealth. I guess going back to the digital storefront issue of this is, um, I think this is a good inciting incident for uh, developers and digital store platform holders such as Steam and Epic to um, develop practices for, for to, to, to resolve issues like this. I don't think people should have to buy the same game twice, especially when it's on the same platform, just not the same uh, digital storefronts. Because I believe even, what was it? I think it was The Witcher 3, you, you can... Um, even The Witcher 2 also, you can import saves from like the Steam version of, of prior games and still have them like go in between. Mm. And but, ironically, uh, um, uh, uh, how Ubisoft does it, Uplay would also fix this as well. Having uh, you force, then- forcibly go through Uplay, and if all three games had to forcibly go through Uplay, they're all still connected in that way. Right. Also, your save, you can transfer your PC save files from a Hades onto the Switch version mm. of it. Mm-hmm. It's a little more complicated here with it being like extra content versus saves, but I would imagine it's still like because um, someone was saying just like yeah, the authorization like to let you download that content is like literally less than a megabyte. So I don't know. Um, and a bit of uh, better news, uh, IO Interactive has managed to use the is it 
has used compression technology to condense Hitman 3 alongside the previous two games worth of content to 70 gigabytes. And it's a hell of a technical achievement, especially considering that Hitman 2 with Hitman 1's levels downloaded equaled 149 gigabytes. So Hitman 3 is sitting at Hitman 3 with the previous two games is sitting at 70 gigabytes. That is that is more than uh, le- less than what's the word I'm looking for. That's less than half than uh, Hitman 2. So it's more games, uh, literally uh, less more than half of the file mm-hmm. size. And I, I think that's like super crazy important, especially in the console sphere where the PS5 has like what 660 something mm-hmm. gigs. So yeah, make games bigger, have better assets, but compress that shit. It will save people a lot of space. H- have you guys have a- have any storage issues on your PS5s? Just like having yes. it constantly delete uh, stuff. Yeah, I still <laughs> yeah. have to play Cold War, and that's still sitting. I had to I actually went through and I deleted like all the multiplayer modes and only Good. have the, story the right modes, way to do it. I only have the story modes on there pretty much that I'm going to be playing. Like yeah, <laughs> that saved me, up so much space on my PlayStation. For me, it was actually cyberpunk that took up a fuck ton of space on my PlayStation. Yeah. So I ended. So, cause when I got back from home for Christmas, I downloaded all the games I got. So to get Sackboy, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and cold war, just the campaign I had to delete Watch Dogs Legion. I had to delete Godfall. And I had to delete uh, Astro's Playroom. Yeah. <laughs> Just to fucking fit everything. I was like, For, dear God. That's, that's pretty much what I'm getting into the habit of is as soon as I finish a game, I'm, I just delete it. Because mm-hmm. I know that I'm not going to, if I know I'm not going to go back to it for a long time or ever, then I just delete it. Yeah, I delete the base game. I don't delete my saves though because I know I'm gonna re-download yeah. Watch Dogs when the when the story DLC comes out, so I can play mm-hmm. it. But exactly. I, so yeah, I deleted Watch Dogs. Did not delete any of my his like the saves. saves the exactly. saves are still there, and the saves don't take up much space. Uh, it's the game itself that takes up all that space. What so. about uh, you, Mesa? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. Um, when I was when I was installing a uh, 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 Cyberpunk. Um, I had to delete um, a bunch of stuff. Um, you know, I, I, I keep, yeah. Like, wait, how which, big is it on console? It's like uh, 90. I think it's like ninety or so on PC. I'd have yeah, to double check. It's around the same. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's on the same on console. But you know, after I beat it, I deleted it. So um, mm-hmm. I've I have I'm 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 a dearth of space now. I <laughs> I've been haven't have haven't quite filled up the the the, the hole yet. So I'm lucky, I'm lucky in that regard. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I know it was a little bit of a jump for me um, on my, and even like my old build and like even uh, my PS4 and Xbox, I would just have like a four terabyte external. So like basically every single game I owned was installed and available at any given moment, but I have become a bit more mm-hmm. um, rational <laughs> about what I need to keep on there. And uh, Cyberpunk 2077 on PC is 62.26 gigs. So maybe a bit smaller than what you have on PS5, which is weird because this is higher assets and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. That's odd. Keanu, Keanu Reeves takes up 40 gigs just, just by himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Horizon yeah, Zero Dawn, the, the PC version, is basically going to be abandoned um, in terms of like active uh, development slash patches and updates and whatnot. And that's not exactly great because it, it's a t- bit of a technical mess on PC. There's lots of bugs, lots of glitches, things just not working properly, which Horizon is a hell of a game. And I think everyone who has access to it on a Sony console should absolutely play it, especially with uh, Forbidden West um, coming up. At that's another some game. Points. That's another game that I'm, I hope they do a next gen upgrade for, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it, so they can bundle it with the with the new one. Yeah, but it's just such a disappointment that they would leave this fucking fantastic game just in a state of disarray. And like you even compare this to what Xbox has done, putting all their games on PC, like most of their games are fucking stellar ports like Gears 5 is fucking amazing on PC. Like it's mm-hmm. so finely tuned and they, that they put the effort into it and seeing their direct competition blatantly not give a shit and then just like abandoning it is pretty disheartening. It's 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 just frustrating because it's like 
if you're Definitely. having to if you're having to shift focus and you're not and you're not like you're not focusing on perfecting the PC build of one of your really big games, then you need to hire more people. You need to hire, you need to get more of a team there because if you're, if you're, if you don't have enough, you clearly don't have enough people to focus on both. You clearly don't have enough people to multitask. So you need to hire more people. Mm-hmm. Like, so Sony, Sony, Sony has the resources. Know. Yeah. They have the resources. They just, they just don't well, think, give up those resources. Well, I think, I think <laughs> at the end of the day, this was just a test. This is a test. And I think at the end of the day, they're just like, you know what? We're good. You know? Yeah, that's fair. I I would have rather they tested it out on something that's not as precious to my heart as Horizon Zero Dawn, because I really wanted to play it on PC. (laughs) I kind of refused to buy it. See, for me, Horizon Zero Dawn is like the perfect game to test it with. Yeah. Yeah, I like that game. It's a good game. I um, but right. speaking, speaking right. of Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> speaking of Horizon Zero Dawn, though, I actually uh, never never got around to uh, starting the Frozen Wilds DLC. And because, neither have I. Because I, I was waiting for was, the PC version because well, it's bundled in there. <laughs> I also heard that it's uh, very very hard, uh, and that you need like the special suit that you can that you can get by collecting the, the assassin's um, creed suit yeah basically the assassin's creed suit. <laughs> the, or the even, Ezio's armor yeah or, or but, Ezio's <laughs> armor. yeah but the um th- but even with that suit it still is difficult uh mm-hmm. to play frozen wilds because of how powerful the enemies are right They're pretty strong yeah. i mean i wouldn't say they're that hard no, I mean they definitely are a step a step up. Though. They definitely are a step up, and I did have that armor. It definitely was useful. Did Frozen Wilds um, add anything to the story? I think no, it did. I didn't. Not really. Mm. Oh wait, okay, kind of does, but not because all of it's like, oh yeah, all this happens like over there, you know. Uh, yeah. mm-hmm. Um, but you do get a, you do learn a little bit more about um, um, what's his name again? Um. Lance Riddick. Uh, Lance Riddick's character, yeah. I mean, you can I learn to, a little bit more about that. I need to go through and like get a recap of of the whole story anyway before I play uh yeah. uh Forbidden West. So <laughs> it's, it's ooh, actually, worth replaying. Ooh, actually I'm just remembering now there's a ooh, actually, yeah, yeah, there's a there's a part there's, <laughs> there's a good there's a really, really good part. There's a really, really, really good part in, in the Frozen Wilds that I think is worth it. Okay. I'm, I think yeah. I'm basically in the same boat as you, though, Corey, where I didn't play Frozen Wild, so... And I, I was holding out for the PC version. I'm like, oh, cool, it's bundled in. I'll go ahead and play it there. Uh, that that version sucks. And so I'll probably just wait for the next-gen update for Horizon and play it mm-hmm. on, 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 on PS5 and play it there. Yeah. So, see, basically, um, what it is is that you get to, like, basically sit down and have a conversation with a pre-apocalypse AI. Oh, it's really, it's really good. It's really good. I'm I'm just gonna look up stuff like videos online. <laughs> I'm just gonna spoil it for myself because I don't think I'm gonna go back and play it. <laughs> uh, let's see. I think I'll go ahead and do it for news. I, I've had some of these stories in here for like forever. We're they're not necessarily like super time important, so we'll get to them when we get to them. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go over what we've been playing. We got about thirty minutes to go. You want to go first, Mesa? Okay, sure. So, um, so um, since I've been since I uh, knocked out Cyberpunk, I've been like, all right, time for me to start blitzing again. So I've just beat Watch Dogs Legion. Hey, um, so yeah, it's pretty good. Um, How about that ending? Yeah, it's Make pretty. It it's pretty. Badly. <laughs> Wait, is this like good or bad? And- <laughs> it's sad. I mean, it's, it's a sad I, ending. I, I'm not gonna spoil the ending because like it ends with being like, yay, mm-hmm. not bad, but it's like, oh, sad. <laughs> yeah, sadder than you thought it was going to be, right? Because that was yeah. my that, that was my mm-hmm. thing. I was like, oh, this is actually really sad. <laughs> and so. And so now I've started three games. I've started. Um, uh, You're a madman. <laughs> uh, was it? It's uh, Breath of the Wild. Um, the there's a Hyrule Warriors, the Fall of Calamity, or yeah, the, 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 yeah. The, the, the Breath of the Wild. Age, Age of Calamity. Mm-hmm. Right. That game I've is so, fun. That so far, fun. yeah, it's very very fun. Yeah. I've also started um, Immortals: Phoenix Rising. 
And I've also started to replay Assassin's Creed 2. Hey, that's on PC or Xbox backwards? Sorry, what? Oh, what, what are you playing it on? Oh, I play uh, PS5. Oh, I forgot they did the HD collection. You're right. Yeah. Okay. How does it yeah. look on PlayStation 5? Is there like an actual um, difference? It may look surprisingly well, especially on a 4K display. Like, because I'm well, expecting it probably you know, gets the base upgrades like that. Yeah, but, but I think I think like the internal resolution is higher than the output resolution, so it makes it look okay. really good on, mm-hmm. on 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 high resolution screens. And uh, so far, yeah, Immortals is is a is a, is a re- really really beautiful, um, you know, quirky little game. Um, you know, definitely puts. Really gets you that Breath of the Wild feeling, though. I personally, I think Breath of the Wild is still uh, significantly better. So See, it does I don't me, know because it still the makes me go have fucking weapon de- de- degradation. Well, it works in Breath of the Wild because yeah, there's so it's many weapons. Don't, don't you don't just use shit. them like guns. Yeah. You That's pick a up seventy four U, and then you use it. And it's empty, and then you throw it away, right? That's a personal same thing problem. With a, same thing with a sword. Don't defend <laughs> the shit. It works. Don't. It works. I, will. I think that's a personal issue that you have, with game, Sarah. <laughs> no, it's um, shit. So I, I will admit, after playing um, Immortals and uh, uh, the 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 Hero Warriors, I I have booted up uh, Breath of the Wild again just to run around. Oh, and- the world. That you're gonna sink another hundred hours in there, dude. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I restarted my master quest. I, I I bashed through Hyrule Warriors uh, uh, Age of Calamity so freaking fast, just mm-hmm. because like I wanted, and I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but I just I wanted to know uh, if it expanded on the story at all. You mm-hmm. know, it just I I had to know, but it's regardless, it's a, such a fun game. And uh, I highly recommend doing as many side quests and side missions as you can. That's what I was just about to start doing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I really wish I liked Musou games because I really want to play uh, Persona 5 Strikers, but I just know yeah. like, like Grand Grand games are just not my thing. I think if there's one to, to, to get people over, I think it's going to be Scramble. Persona 5 Scramble. Just purely on the fact that you have persona to use in right. fight um i could just never get into musos though i think because it because it's the whole like whole anxiety driven when it's like quick you need to get over here in like two minutes and you're like across the fucking map and i'm just like like having to like run and do that and then well when you're like halfway there another thing pops up and it's just like it's constant mm-hmm. never-ending stuff that messes with me mentally mm-hmm. that i do because i tried the original hyrule four years and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I mm-hmm. just couldn't do it. It is pretty anime, though. Yep. Um, but uh, besides that, um, yeah. Next up on the list, once I finish, once I finish this little wave is um, um, Super Mario Brothers, uh, new Super Mario Brothers U, um, the Slabber Sooth RPGs. And uh, oh, last the of ones, they're so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're so good. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping there's going to be a graphical update to Last of, last of Us too. So I'm waiting to do that. The last. That's what I'm waiting um, for for a second playthrough at least. Because yeah, because it, like because again they added they added dual sense support, but not anything else. So mm-hmm. I'm just hoping at least just make it run a little bit higher res, and I'll, I'll be fine. But that's it. That's me. Let's see. I think I'll jump into one of mine because I know Sarah wants to talk about it also. Uh, I beat Cyberpunk. I did all the side quests. Mm. I did the main mission. I got an ending that I am satisfied with. I won't spoil anything. Mm. Which one? Um, I'll tell you after. (laughs) I think Uh, I'm... I'm, I'm, Yeah, I'm not the uh, well. Me and Sarah are the only ones that haven't beaten it. So I'm yeah. I am really close. I'm like three story chapters away. But I'm my not. dumbass <laughs> keeps getting distracted by <gasps> exclamation point. Well, well, see, like, I, I don't think it's a spoiler to say like right before you start like the last series of story missions. Oh shit! It is raining very hard outside. I hope that's not on the mic. Give me one second. Is it? 
I don't hear it. You're me. Yeah, I don't hear it either. Well, you're in San Francisco. <laughs> well, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I, mean, I don't hear it on my window, which since we're, since we're like five minutes away from each other. Yeah. Um, fuck was so I gonna say? Yeah. So, yeah. So it's very explicit when you're about to start like the last uh, chain of story missions. It's like, hey, you should really finish any side quests you want before you continue. So I'm like, fuck it. I guess I'm going to do all the side quests before I go on. So I'd reached that point like two weeks ago. So like the entire last week that I was playing Cyberpunk was entirely side quests and maybe not necessarily backtrack on what I had said on our first kind of like Cyberpunk episode that we had done with uh, Dio. Um, A lot of the really good side quests are like almost entirely relegated to the back end of the game. And I'm just like, why? There's some really fucking good shit here. Absolutely. There's there's so much useless filler in the beginning. It's like, just take that stuff out it's not even that good like, like I, I don't like, care about quantity i want the quality shit like like i was i was falling out too until i'm pretty sure i got to the exact same point you got to and i was like oh wait i'm having fun again i care about what's <laughs> happening again oh whoa it's like i care whoa. about these characters what the, the storyline's good uh um, why wasn't this sprinkled throughout the entire game that, that game just why was got, this like, regulated until the third act Like, I didn't even care about the gameplay, like, after, I didn't really care for the gameplay for most of it, but, like, after a while, just kind of became, like, something to do in between doing the side quests, Mm -hmm. which were kind of, like, the real meat and meat and bones of it, and with that, I'm not going to do any spoilers, there is a concert that is really fucking cool, that is, like, a standout moment, like, that was a really fucking cool moment in this game that I'm going to remember for a really damn long time. Um, I, I did eventually get like some gameplay enhancements, such as being able to double jump and doing grenade hacks where you force someone to like hold up a grenade right next to their face, which is cool. Um, double jump is great. I, oh, yeah, have, I, I love a, the double jump. It I actually have a, saves you falling from heights too, which is cool. I have a funny fucked up story and Sarah is probably going to hate me for this. Um, so in terms of romancing, so I was playing oh, as I was, female. I was talking to you while you were doing this. Oh, you know, yes, but just just for the people at home. Think about okay. the people. Um, so I was playing as female V. I, I romanced Judy. Um, but I was being a little bit overtly friendly with our boy River, who I just want to say real f- first, uh, you were on the record, Sarah, for saying river that's that's my straight option who the fuck is river that's just some dude and then literally like a week like what like i think a week and a half where you took oh my god i love river he's so romantic oh my god and and me and dear were just like really you said he was some dude i accept defeat i love river with all of my heart and soul i I accept defeat before you go on. I get it. I was wrong. <laughs> he made me jambalaya and I played with his niece and nephews and let them win. I was wrong and I'm singing my Ron song. River was <laughs> wonderful and I said I wanted to be in a relationship with him and I fucked the police. Damn it. I did it. I did the thing. <laughs> He wasn't the police anymore. Yeah, oh no, true. but when you but when you fuck him. And you wake up wearing his shirt, Mesa. The description of his shirt says, taking the term fuck the police to a whole new level. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I did the thing. And I was Ron. River's a great character. He texts you very cute things. And he's like, oh, I just don't have words for how you for how you for for like how you make me feel. And I and I am a sucker. I'm a sucker. I love it. <laughs> River is a fantastic boy, and he, at least from what I've seen, he might be like the most wholesome choice to go with. Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. He makes you jump in, a lion, dude. <laughs> I would say in terms of memorability, I would say maybe carries the best in the game, but I was not playing as male V, so that wasn't an option. Um, mm-hmm. But but I like, just, I like Pan Am a lot. Pan Am, I like how ang- I like how angry Pan Am gets. <laughs> She gets fucking she pissed does. all the time. It's she great. Does get pretty angry, and my and my and, and my V the whole time is like, dude, calm the fuck down. I don't think calm down, dude. But, uh, going going back to River, like, yeah, he's just such a fantastic dude. And so I was already in a relationship with Judy in game, and so I'm going along with this little, just fun little side quest you're doing with River. You're helping play like holographic gunfights with him and his kids. You're like, he's or not his kids, his. uh his nephew slash niece 
and yeah, they're no. so cute. They're like, yeah. oh, I am a day away from my re- re- retirement. <laughs> so fucking intense, and I love and, it. And River tells, he's like, oh, go easy on the kids. Let them rent. Let them win. And they're like super slow as you have to wait for him to shoot. And it, it, it's just, it's just a very cute cut scene or a mission. And uh, there's a point where one of the kids, she's like, oh, who thinks that V and Uncle River would make a cute couple? And then you have like a timed event where you can like raise your hand and be like, oh, me too. I'm just like, oh, wait, I, I River's a cool dude, but I'm with Judy. I, 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 don't, I have no intentions of, of going with River and I did it anyway. I got his hopes up. And sure enough, he, he brings me up to his little spot where that Mesa had mentioned previously. He's like, come on, don't string me along. What, what, what do you think about this? I'm just like... Uh, dude, I played you so bad, but I'm gonna have to say no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right, right. I and so I was gonna point that with him when he was doing this. <laughs> Damn. It was so bad. I felt like such can a I, dick. I struck him along so bad. <laughs> can I You're just say bizarre. that the way that Cyberpunk handles romances is something I wish Dragon Age did, where instead of just like talking to people enough times and me like putting myself in Colin's face like do you love me yet you do like legitimate like quests and you have to be right with the way that you answer them because if you answer them wrong you're out you're not romancing them. I, mean, I like even, how you need to be strategic I mean, even it. even <laughs> worse it could be like fire emblem where you talk where you just happen to be on the same square as someone three times you're like I, I guess we're married yeah like oh guess we have a kid like it's i like <laughs> i like what cyber what what cyberpunk does with it i think more games that allow you to have like romance options like dragon age like M- mass effect I, th- I think mass effect 2 and 3 did this a little bit better to where you had like quests to do with these characters that you could romance and if you did the quest and said the right options and stuff but like cyberpunk these characters have full-on like story modes like river's story is legit like multiple quests and his thing gets dark mm-hmm. like his thing gets like incredibly dark like it, I, it, it, like, in ways that i was not expecting i'm i don't like that cartoon oh. yeah me neither <laughs> <laughs> like it was it was so uncomfortable and kind of want cd project to tackle a horror game once they get all this shit fixed but uh yeah like i wish more games did what cyberpunk is doing um let, let's in, see on my in other the notes good, here. in the good stuff in I, the good stuff. <laughs> i think they actually did incredibly great trans representation with one specific character in the game in which um they're revealed to be trans because they they do it of their own volition it's not an outside factor that decides to bring it up um so how i think like this piece is actually some good some great writing and it just kind of pales in comp or not does not pale in comparison the the other marketing and other transphobic shit that we covered in our episode with uh dio it's like super contrast against this it was like wait you actually wrote a really good trans character but you're still doing all the shitty stuff which kind of speaks to the fact that you know different writers different marketing it's it's a, a video game company isn't comprised of one person who's doing all this someone does sign off on it but that's a separate issue um the racing missions are laughably bad and they were really bad in the witcher 3 as well it's like it, it's not even a competition in in cyberpunk it's like i don't know i'm going straight make a turn like everyone is so laughably far behind you there's no fucking blue shells here to fucking to salvage their chance at a victory and the witcher 3 is just like i don't know let, let's uh kick let's spur my horse to, to speed up oh no the person's catching up let me just place my horse directly in front of them to block them so they can't move it, and I it, think, this, this part is so bad and i think i've mentioned this before but um part of the racing mini game is having someone shoot out the window of your car mm-hmm. but um one of the fastest um like street cars in the game doesn't have windows so oh. you just so, so you're just striping with no gutter and it's like, okay <laughs> great um i guess my last notes on it would be this is you can ex- this you can expand further into that this is just an open world game issue but it's more egregious here so I, it's not a spoiler to say um, the, the core conceit behind the game is that Johnny Silverhand is stuck in your head and that your life is a ticking time bomb because you're going to die from this v- incredibly soon unless you get Johnny out of your head or you do something like that, right? 
Um, so in a game where you have this narrative ticking time bomb, you should feel the pressure to hurry up and like go through the main mission, go ahead and de- get this thing done. It makes zero fucking sense that V would go off and do like random Merc missions to go off and help fucking uh, Carrie figure out some fucking dispute with his labels. It's like, it's like uh, this entire week I did side quests. I'm just like, oh yeah, I have this thing that's literally going to fucking kill me. Why am I spending my time doing this? Yeah, so and the it, way they kind of make it seem serious, how like your screen starts like glitching out and be just like, it's like oh my god, uh, like, it's like it's uh, fine, <laughs> but like it also fucks with my eyesight, so it hurts my eyes whenever it happens. And I actually had my game glitch a couple weeks ago to where it kept happening no matter what I did. Mm-hmm. So I and like it literally gave me a headache. So like I, how they do it is fine, but I completely agree. It makes it like, oh, you only have like what, like a week or so to live, mm-hmm. and it's like, like I'm I, now I went gone way for more like than two week. in-game months <laughs> <laughs> doing side side shit. Um, I think that's gonna go ahead and do it for me, at least for now. Um, I was streaming Resident Evil Seven. I think I kind of already gave some of my thoughts on it earlier i guess some of the quick notes without going too far into it is i like how resident evil 7 has stalker type enemies such as jack uh there's a great balance of puzzles amnesia type hiding and there's bursts of action when you have plenty of ammo but there is an incredible lack of enemy variety and i have a bunch of notes here for valhalla but i will save that for next time as i will continue to play it because that's the game i'm playing right now oh i'm so sorry just remembered i also finished uh, ghost of tsushima sorry oh just nice. remember that <laughs> yeah sorry did you choose the stabby or the not stabby ending not stabby thank you mesa yeah. that's the, the whole point of the game the whole point of the game is to teach you this is like there's no point in the stabby you gotta do the unstabby thank you lord sakai <laughs> um so, Nine out of ten. so i played um uh, what did I play recently? I played uh, Twin Mirror recently, or Twin Mirrors, I think. Um, and that was an okay game, kind of a generic detective, you know, based game. It, it was kind of like a, a don't nod game that was like called in, essentially, you know? <laughs> like, all right, we got to have a game or something. Here you go. Here's a detective game or something. Um, there's that. And then what else was I playing? You were I know, playing I, some weird, like, horror version of Pac-Man last night. What the <laughs> fuck is that? So, I mean, I'm playing just, like, random games here and there, but I, I have this game uh, on my Steam account that has been there for a long time, and I just never touched it. And um, uh, it, what is it called? Let me pull up my Steam real quick. It. Uh, I will say your, your, your strategy for collecting little Pac-Man pellets uh, left a little to be desired. What do you mean? You, you would okay. So you know in Pac-Man how like the four corners it has like the loop or whatever. Uh-huh. So you wouldn't finish the loop. You would just like go into like one corner. Then, nah, like, head dude. To the all you don't. The... You don't understand these things. Okay, so it's called Dark Deception, and the first level is where you're in a hotel and you have to collect these like purple crystals, and there's like almost 300 of them and while you're collect while you're going down these hallways in you know 3d there's these evil mechanical monkeys that are like chasing you and like bellhop monkeys and um you have like three lives and so you have to collect all of the purple crystals and get back to the entrance uh so you can like collect this piece of a mystic ring that this witch needs or whatever and uh that's just the first level and there's like 10 of these levels and they're all different types of enemies. Um, then I just found out last night because I finally beat the first level that you can upgrade your character by using these shards that you collect um, and le- you know leveling up and and making them be able to go faster or whatever. But I haven't. I, I have. I tried a few times on the second level, and the second level is, of course, even harder. So <laughs> you do get murdered by the monkeys quite a lot. I did. I was like. It's one of those games that you get so frustrated about that you keep dying, but you keep getting better and you just can't stop because it's so addictive. Because, I mean, let's be honest. It's just like three-dimensional horror-based Pac-Man. That's literally what it is. Right. <laughs> uh, is it free yeah. on Steam or it was the first? The first level is free, but if you want the full like pass, 
that includes all of the episodes that have already come out and have yet to come out, um, then or all the chapters, I should say, uh, then it's like twenty bucks. Um, but that but uh, chapter four is is about to drop soon. And then chapter five hasn't even been remotely uh, reported on, but that's the final chapter. Okay. But yeah. Is that's, that about it that you've been playing or? Uh, I mean, other than that, I've just been playing spirit fairer on stream. I just started playing uh, Scott Pilgrim, the the video game, which got re-released recently. Like la- I think last did, week. Did you buy it on you play? Uh, no, if, if no, so, I we, bought we it on I, I bought it on Epic. I don't know if we'll be able to play together, but if we can, let's do it. Because yeah, that yeah. game's fucking hard by yourself. It's so hard. Me and so I had Ish playing with me because me and Ish are super into Scott Pilgrim. We we've read all the comics and we've seen the movie several times. Um, so he he and I were stoked when the game got announced that it's being re released, um, and we were just having a blast with it on uh, last Tuesday. But it's so hard. It's so hard. <laughs> I, I think my main, I don't know if it'd be a complaint, but like enemies block a shit ton and there's no yeah. real way to get around that. You can't nope. like grab them or anything. You just got to wait for them to attack or something. But it, I, there is a block mechanic in that game, but me and him hardly use it. And it's really frustrating because we really need to learn how to block. <laughs> there, there's also a friendly fire mechanic, which me and Bronson, um, our guest from last week, found out very quickly. And we yeah, abused it a lot. I, I, I'm I'm not turning that on because you can already hurt your hurt your ally if you accidentally throw something at them. Accidentally. Yeah. Quotes. <laughs> Which the best part of that game is you can pick up enemies and you can like throw them at other enemies. And you can pick up your ally and throw them at enemies. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it's it's a fun time. It is a fun time. <laughs> Let's see if that's it for you, Corey. Um, what about you, Sarah? What have you been up to? More cyberpunk. <laughs> that's <laughs> basically it. I just want to. It's not, and I'm not saying this in like a bad way because I'm literally enjoying myself. I just want to get this game done so I can play other stuff because like I haven't touched anything else but that. And it's like I want to replay through Cold Cold War's cam- uh, campaign. Uh, a friend of mine convinced me to redownload Modern Warfare 2019 so I can play through that cam- campaign. Again, because it's been a while, and I legit loved that campaign when it came out. Um, I want to. Uh, there's like so many other games I legit want to play um, that I can't because Cyberpunk's just taking over my life. <laughs> I, and I'm actually curious how many hours I put on Steam. It'll show me. I have 40 at the moment. Like I just hit the 40 mark yesterday. 84.3 hours. Yeah, so I'm so I'm already at 40, and I'm not even done with the story yet. So. <laughs> I yeah again I'm not saying that in a bad way because I'm legit enjoying myself but I want to play other things. I think I, I need. To, <laughs> I think in terms of like getting through my backlog, I need to go back to prioritizing short games first because I've had yeah. tell me why sitting on my desktop just like play me. I'm a short narrative game and and what the fuck does my dumbass do? Let's I don't know. Let's play Valhalla. Yeah, because I want to play Valhalla really bad. Um, but a friend of mine is like, I know you. He's like, don't go straight to Cyberpunk to Valhalla because you're going to get burned out very bad. So like, it's so hard for me because Val- I literally see Val- Val- Valhalla sitting on my shelf. And I want to play it really bad because I love the Assassin's Creed. I love that s- series. But I just I- can't because I still haven't beaten Cyberpunk yet. And I still have to beat Call of the Sea on the Series X. And I need to play the medium when that com- comes out this this week. So, I don't know, man. Too many games. Cyberpunk's taking over my life, and Johnny Silverhand judged me because I slept with the cop. <laughs> Didn't he say just, he wanted, like... He wanted just, to gouge his eyes out. I just have to say that I honestly uh, can't wait to play the medium because it's really going to itch that, that Silent Hill scratch. Oh, 100%. Or it's going to really scratch that Silent Hill itch that I have, especially with Akira Yamaoka being the music artist. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm so excited. very excited about that <laughs> game. Um, I'm very interested in it. I'm glad that it's on Game Pass. So I don't have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. I could just like go and download it, which I'm which I'm 100 going to do. Yep. yep. But uh, other than that, I mean, I want to start streaming a bit more after I did 
uh, the charity stream yesterday, which went really, really well. I died in Demon Souls, I think, like fifteen fucking times. Oh, because <laughs> to be fair, it was chat quite chose funny. to send me to Latria. <laughs> oh, <laughs> which I had only beaten the first boss, and chat was like, "Go to the Latria dungeons," and I went okay and then chat instantly went why did we send her to the latria dungeons like five minutes after i went there and i'm just like <laughs> i'm like you sent hey. me there yeah but uh i yeah i mean it was a lot of fun i made it to the giant ballista but that was about it because i didn't know how to get past the ballista but um i want to play more demon souls i just want to play it in an environment where i'm not being sent to <laughs> no what the fuck yeah again, it was it was fun and people were like you're a people were saying i was doing really good so i mean like i i, I guess but yeah no um nothing else i have a couple dating sims i need to beat on switch still but i keep playing project diva so i mean that'll probably never happen but <laughs> mm -hmm. it's just good to else. have them there <laughs> yeah good to be like hmm, do i want an anime boy to call me pretty to <laughs> i do uh so here i go <laughs> but other than that nothing else so okay i think that's basically gonna about do it sure. um i guess in terms of what to expect from us going forward this podcast is now going to be on sundays it just fits in a bit better for everyone's schedule especially given sarah's new uh new job which she's actually very happy with I do nothing but play video games all day. Kind of. <laughs> Pretend I never said that because I don't know if they're going to hear this. <laughs> um, let's see. What have I... I Okay, so I ran into <laughs> a file corruption issue on the VO track for my Doom Eternal essay, which I was already going to be incredibly busy this week slash next week, so it was already going to be on the back burner. But, uh, I don't know, whenever files get corrupted, especially when I spend, like, an hour doing something, especially when it's something like VIA where you're, like, constantly messing up lines, trying to get it good, do the good accentuation, uh, I'm very annoyed at that project. So I did put the article version up. That's over on my Medium. You can find the link to that in the link tree down below. Um, I'm going to be streaming a lot more often nowadays. I'm going to try to shoot for every other day. We're currently playing through Resident Evil 7. I might do some Valhalla, but other than that, it's going to be Resident Evil 2 and 3. And I believe Sarah had mentioned that she would like to be on the uh, Resident Evil 3 streams. So that should be a fun time. She also what had her headphones I off mentioned? when I said that. So. Sorry, sorry. What did you <laughs> I know, mention? I know I had mentioned that um, I'm streaming some Resident Evil uh, stuff for which uh, you had said that you might want to go ahead and pop on for some of them. Yeah, um, I would love to view my crazy dumb Resident Evil theories. As you play through, <laughs> because Resident Evil is one of my favorite series of all time. And uh, it's had a renaissance recently that I would love to comment on. So, Let's see. How about you, Mesa? What should people expect from your uh, corner? People uh, <laughs> um, continually, you know, very, very, very um, uh, sporadically uploading to my YouTube account. Nothing, nothing dramatic, nothing crazy yet. I'm hoping to start streaming a little bit more. Um, but that's it's it's not a definite thing at the current moment. Uh, just because it's just just how time is right now. You're a busy. Um, yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. You know, hoping to start streaming fighting games and other things. I'm, I currently have a. <sighs> I currently have a uh, over four year long playthrough of SMT three Nocturne on my channel that I'm slowly chipping away through. <laughs> <laughs> I can only do it when I have a certain friend available. So, um, so that, that significantly limits the, the, the time I can do it. Um, but you know, we started doing it again. We've, we've made a commitment to try to do it more often since I'm about 65, 70% way through the game. We're trying to finish it next couple months. Nice. Which, uh, SMT Nocturne it's really good tricked me to thinking I might like Persona Persona's so. good Mesa <laughs> not the parts I don't like you know the Persona parts <laughs> <laughs> you probably just picked the wrong waifu Mesa it's okay <laughs> so people make mistakes <laughs> 
Uh, what about you, Corey? You've, you've been a busy bee. Uh, yeah, no, I've just been, um, I've just been writing my butt off. Um, I was trying to get my book done by the end of this month, but I don't think that's going to happen now, but I am making good headway. Um, uh, on my current novel. And so would you say that you're trying to book it? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, so it looks like I'm (laughs) probably looking more towards the middle, if not the end of February when I'll be done with, with the first draft, um, which is exciting. So, uh, other than that, I'm just streaming three days a week, uh, Monday and Tuesday at 6 PM over on my channel, Celtic scribe, and also Fridays at 7 PM. Uh, this channel, uh, the Seth Rokaga, is automatically set to host Corey whenever he's online, and I am not. So, mm, and vice um, versa. Yeah, you should always check him out. And also, just as a side note, Corey, I don't know if people in your life actively give you the credit for for what you do in terms of your creative endeavors and the fact that you have published books. Um, you should be incredibly fucking proud of yourself. Ah, oh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I. No, it's uh, it's writing was always something I always wanted to do from from when I was a teenager. And I just uh, that was the first thing I went after. Um, unfortunately, my books are no longer available on Amazon. But that's a whole that's a whole thing that happened. It's actually really good news because that means I can do whatever the heck I want with my books now. So we'll see. <laughs> All right. And Sarah, what are you going to be up to that people should check out? Uh, I'm working on a uh working on a blog post that will give my personal what resident evil media you you should consume before eight come comes out uh it's going to be on my own personal opinion as a longtime fan as of like based on story and lore for specific games and uh cgi films uh not much i mean i'm, I'm actually gonna start looking into picking up a uh a elgato stream thing so i can try to start streaming switch dating sims because i don't know if there's a market for that but i'm gonna try to do it um, I'm sure there, no i'm sure i think you would is. be su- you would be surprised yeah uh, i see a lot of dating sims on twitch you, you should but, play the uh, best dating sim of all time otherwise known as danganronpa no thanks uh mm-hmm. but you, I mean, you don't want there? your husbando to die <laughs> horribly i mean <laughs> Uh, other than that, I mean, nothing really. I'm still picking, I'm still like chipping away at this really big, uh, uh, mm-hmm. what Silent Hill can learn from Hellblade about psychological horror piece that I've been doing. Uh, it's very dense. It's very difficult. Uh, I'm just slowly chipping away at it. We'll see. We'll see how this goes. Hoping stuff like company. Ex- is it like analysis. an exhortation? Uh, it's an essay. Okay. So you I'm know, hoping that whatever company announces a new Silent Hill game so I can have actual m- motivation to finish it. <laughs> you know, Sarah, if you crash your car, it will have many dents. Cool. <laughs> I see you smirking, Corey. Don't deny it. Well, yep, that's I'm going to throw car. everything I'm not, at you. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, I've, I've kind of had a, kind of had a block of sort on creativity recently, so. It's okay. It happens. <laughs> yeah. We'll We're all there. Mm-hmm. All right, but just to conclude, um, please there. follow everyone on this podcast. All our ads are on screen. Um, keep up to date with everyone's work. You can find everyone's stuff over from their Twitter and whatnot. Um, like, comment, subscribe on all the socials. If you're on Twitch here, go ahead and follow. It is free. Uh, like, comment, subscribe on YouTube. And, yeah, follow us on Twitter. See some uh, some tall lady posts. I hate you. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.